Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carol Lehman, and I'm the CEO of a company called Exonify. What Exonify does is deliver a three to five minute a day micro learning experience that's adaptive to the individual and dramatically changes behavior quickly to drive a business outcome. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is um, one of the concepts that we use and as, as we uh, train corporate employees. So we're strictly a corporate solution, not K-12 or higher ed. And it's all around this concept of people can be machines too. So with that little bit of controversial topic, I'm going to get you to think about a few questions. First one is this, and, and really, really think about this. What if you could truly measure, and I, I mean truly measure, and understand the impact of education, your training programs on your business results? What if you could tie those things together? And what if you could leverage this understanding to continuously hone in and optimize their effectiveness, those programs? And what if you could instantly adapt what you're delivering by way of knowledge to people, person by person, to close specific knowledge gaps and know really what is the content that matters? What if you could use training as an automatic lever to optimize your business results in real time? And what if you could do all of that at scale, person by person, in your organization topic area by topic area. If you could do all of that, could you influence people and their behavior just like you program a machine? Well, I'm here to tell you that the answer is yes. So when I originally did this slide, I had on there, could you control people like you can control a machine? And my sister said to me, because I practiced with my sister a few days ago, just to see if this was understandable to the layperson, and she said, don't use the word control. <laughs> you get into the realm of whole mind control. Well, I'm happy to tell you that the time for training and education to leverage big data the way that other parts of the organization are now leveraging big data, and specifically in some industries we'll talk about, is finally here. Learning and development has the opportunity to double down on data gathering to begin to be true strategic enablers in the business and to specifically deploy their efforts, money, activities in areas that are going to drive business outcomes for those organizations. So why do this at all? The reason is that historically, Nobody in the corporate sector has had any understanding of the value that training is delivering. It's this big black box, we spend tons of money. In fact, billions of dollars a year are spent by companies over and over and over again, training their people on the same things, hoping something sticks, and that those employees end up being top performers in the business. The reality is that learning and development really does not get any insight, and therefore the business doesn't get any insight into the effectiveness of what they're doing. And this is the number one challenge for learning and development professionals in corporate enterprise today, if you ask them. What's, what's even worse is that 92% of CEOs will say they have no idea what the impact of learning is on their organizations. And we do this over and over and over again every year. It's well more than $100 billion spent by corporate enterprise every year. So let's take a step back. When I say that learning and development finally has the opportunity to change the game on this, the analogy I wanna draw is to the marketing profession. So 15 years ago, 20 years ago, we all remember the day when marketing, that the common phrase was, we're going to throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And whether it was buying billboards or radio ads or TV ads or magazine pieces, you just tried a whole bunch of things to raise awareness about your company, your products, 
and hoped that salespeople could then effectively sell them. But you never really knew why buyers were buying. You were just trying all kinds of stuff and hoping something worked. So it went into that big black hole. What's happened over the last 15 years is technology has emerged in the marketing domain to allow marketers to be those strategic enablers in their business. They now employ data in volume that really has given them tremendous insight into exactly what's working and exactly what isn't. So they can deploy company resources in a way that gets the biggest bang for the buck. And learning and development, which is still largely way on the other side of that scale, is now starting to move up the scale and make an impact on business. Other industries that have had, uh, have used big data for a great positive effect uh, within those industries are things like retail. Uh, the whole omni-channel um, effort and uh, that whole kind of area of retail has allowed those companies to gather data about customers and increase basket size, for example. In the personal entertainment space, you know, how we book travel, what we listen to online, uh, what we watch on TV is used to present to us different things the next time we go on. Banking, I don't know how many of you have had um, your uh, credit card companies call you because there's been suspicious activity on your credit card. I've had that at least five times in the last five years because of big data. And then insurance, of course, using lots of data to mitigate risk exposure. So these are industries that are deploying big data in the way that learning and development now has the opportunity to. And that historical problem of data can now be changed. It's a slow change, though. And what we still see is what we call a street light effect. Learning and development professionals are looking where the light is shining and trying to figure out how to change things. They're still focused largely on things like completions and test scores, those one-time event data things that come out of a very limited event. Well, we now have the ability to do what we call collect the five Vs of big data. And I'm going to tell you how. And their velocity of data, variety of data, veracity, which is accuracy of data, the value and volume. Those five Vs are changing the game for learning in corporate enterprise today. And why is because there's been this three-point collision of things that have happened over the last five to 10 years. The first one being the changing demographics of the modern learner. It just is the case today that everybody who works in a company tends to be overwhelmed at work. They have many things coming at them. The expectations are huge. The pace of business is huge. They're mobile and untethered. They expect information in the point of need Otherwise, they're going to go find it if you don't provide it. Those characteristics have changed the way we work. The second thing is that there have been some pretty amazing advancements in brain science, cognitive science, things like spaced repetition, spacing when you present a learner information appropriately and making it elastic repetitively. Retrieval practice, the single best way to get a human being to remember anything ask them a question and get them to retrieve the answer from their own brain and do that repetitively, people will not forget. Confidence-based assessment, getting the learner, the employee to self-assess the confidence they have in their own knowledge, another great brain science or cognitive technique. These things create data that has really been the foundation of what's evolved as micro-learning, that common term which is now starting to be prevalent in the learning space. And the third thing is just advancements in technology. So we have devices everywhere, and there really is no excuse why employees can't access information, have it accessible to them, have learning accessible to them anywhere, anytime it weaves into their workflow. So where does all the data come from? Where are all those data points coming from? So first of all, I like to think of this as almost like a recipe. You have demographic data that is consistent in your organizations. Things about the job, the role, the tenure of the, the person, the qualifications they need. Think about it like baking a cake. If you have a cake 
a basic cake. It's got the same ingredients. It's got flour, eggs, water, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, and you can bake a cake with those ingredients, but it's a pretty bland cake. What you need on top of the basic ingredients are all of the interesting things. You're baking a chocolate cake, you need chocolate. Pineapple cake, you need pineapple. And a variety of other things to make that interesting cake. Well, micro learning allows you to gather question, answer history, success or not time to answer questions, the recency of the presentation of the information, tons of granular data around learning that you can then marry with the demographic data you have about the individual and the job. And if you can adapt it then, person by person, based on what they know and don't know, and tie in your business outcomes to that, you have a very robust data set. How big can it be? This is a typical Exonify customer. 75% voluntary participation multiple times a week, 110 average learning events a year, not one that most companies deliver to their employees, a minimum of 10 data points that you gather every time they're learning, which equates in an organization that has 50,000 employees, 250 million data points a year. That's 593,000 printed pages, which is what you see in the background of that picture at the Cincinnati Library. That's every year for one company. That's how much data they generate. So, how do you figure out the recipe? You need machine learning. You need data cleansing. You need to ingest it. You need statistical correlations. What things correlate with what other things? If you ingest your business outcomes, sales, expense reduction, those sorts of things, you then can identify gaps and start to predict where you need to change things and identify what subjects ma matter, what frequency of learning matters, what all the variables are, and you have actionable recommendations right down to the level of the person in your organization to start to apply your dollars and cents to change what people are doing very rapidly to get you that optimal business result. So we like to say that everything changes now. Microlearning data is the big data. The language is your business data. What do you need people to do? What are those strategic imperatives you need them to achieve? You apply machine learning to all of that vast amount of data and you end up with learning attribution at scale. Just like marketing, marketing attribution has now become commonplace. Learning attribution is in the early stages of becoming commonplace in corporate enterprise. So being able to understand this recipe allows us to do something very important, and that's put the right information in front of the right people at exactly the right time and influence their behavior pretty dramatically and pretty quickly. So here's three quick examples in closing. So this is a major logistics organization with uh, millions of people actually. And it turns out that the frequency of knowledge presentation in their distribution centers is the key driver of the reduction of safety incidents. Among all the variables, it's the frequency of information that matters the most. In this telecommunications retailer, having across their population knowledge levels of 80% or more in three key topic areas is the key factor in driving sales. In fact, once they understood that, within 90 days, they were selling 25% more of a particular product because they got rid of the content that wasn't making a difference, and they doubled down on the content that was and driving knowledge and participation around that content. In an insurance situation, this is a global insurance company that had a huge issue with errors in claims processing. So their uh, people were making errors that were costing the company millions of dollars a year. And it turns out that the recency, how 
what that length of period of time was between the last presentation of information and actually seeing that on a form where they had to make a judgment was the key factor in driving those claims processing errors down. So what are they all doing? In conclusion, they are using very, very granular learning data to turn their people into machines. And you can too. And the best part is that the employees understand they are getting smarter, they're doing their jobs better, and they actually appreciate the opportunity to be better performers in the workplace. And if you make it quick and easy and fun for them to do it, woven into the workday, you can get all kinds of data that helps you optimize learning and the dollar spent and really deliver that value as a learning and development professional. And I think that's it. Thanks. Okay, yes. Yeah, for sure. So if you leave me a card, I'm happy. I think the slide decks are going to be posted, actually, so you can access it there. Um, so how do we do it in three minutes a day? So we've been doing this for six years. Um, most of our customers are global multinationals with thousands to tens of thousands of people. Um, I'll tell you why it works, the way it works. The brain is optimally designed to uh, take in four to five pieces of new information at one time. If you go beyond that, you start, what's, what starts to happen is something called memory decay, very, very quickly. And so if you can, in three to five minutes, convey in a way that's entertaining, so that that's where the gamification elements come in, entertaining information specific to that individual's knowledge or knowledge gaps, the brain is optimally designed to take in those four to five new pieces of information, retain it long term, and then operationalize it at the point of need. So it kind of works like this. I'll do an, a live experiment here. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question that you know the answer to, and just stick your hand up when you know the answer, okay? So today is Monday. Tell me what you had for <laughs> Stuck your hand up already. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can read my mind. <laughs> Tell me what you had for dinner last Monday night. Now, I guarantee with enough time, you all know the answer to that question. Okay? I, so what's happening right now is I've asked you for a piece of knowledge that you know, and it's parked somewhere back in your brain. And at some point, you will remember it. Now, I can tell you, if last Monday night was a birthday or an anniversary or something significant, and you've attached that uh, piece of information to it, then you will remember it more quickly. So let's just say with enough time, you followed the breadcrumbs, you know you had spaghetti last Monday night. Now think about it this way. So I've just asked you one little piece of information. If I ask you again tomorrow, what did you have for dinner last Monday night? And you remembered it today? Do you think you'll remember tomorrow a lot more quickly? You will. Then if, what if I wait four days and I ask you again? What did you have for dinner that Monday night? Do you think you'll remember? Faster than today, tiny bit slower than tomorrow, but the chance are you will remember. Then if I wait 20 days and ask you, what did you have for dinner that Monday night? Chances are you will remember it was spaghetti. Now, if I didn't do any of that and I asked you 30 days from now, what did you have for dinner on April, whatever it was, the third? Do you think you would remember? No. Chances are you would not unless it was a date that was associated with something. So that's how the brain algorithm works to drive memory and retention very quickly. It's called retrieval practice and you can do it effectively with four to five pieces of information in one short learning session, repetitively person by person, and know exactly when the person's going to forget it and deliver it again. And if you can do it successfully, Three to five times in 30 days, you never have to repeat it again. That's 
That's a very simple explanation of how it works. I think I'm done. Okay.